Four o'clock. Yep. All right, let's stand. Hello, hello. All right, it's four o'clock. Welcome, everybody. Hi. All right, come on in. Are we here for IP protection for creatives? Yes. yes. All right, well, you're in the right place. And <laughs> if you're not, you still can hang out here. We got plenty of seats. Um, I'm uh, Carlos Loso Perez, and this is my partner and wife in our uh, adventures here. Anan Ananya Mahal. And uh, we're here to talk about intellectual properties for creatives. So we're all here creative people, creators. Yes. Yeah, we make our own stuff. We're musicians, comic creators, cosplayers, writers. Writers. Yeah, I'm a, I write children's books and I draw them, so. Excellent. Super. Some bookmakers, all right? Cool. I'm a sequential artist, comic artist, and paint anything else as well if there's opportunity. And? I'm a writer and content creator. Cool. I write comic books, novels, memoirs, all kinds of stuff. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we're representing our company, Prime Vice Studios. I don't know if you have or have not heard of us, but we've been in Atlanta for the past, uh, established five years ago. And what we do is, we're gonna talk about what we do through our presentation a little bit, and we're gonna have a bit of a conversation about these things. And after the presentation, we have some, we can do some FAQs, and uh, sounds good? Yeah. And then we got some stuff for you guys. <laughs> we got some stuff. Yeah. All right, so IP stands for intellectual properties, right? and protection for creatives. And our subtitle is Empowering Underserved Communities Through Intellectual Property Development. So that's a fancy way of saying people that need to make some money through making stuff from their head, all right? And this is my little character in the corner, as Damiana. You're gonna learn a little bit more about her in a second. A quick disclaimer, this information contained in this guide is not meant as a substitute for professional, legal, or business advice, okay? It's just a uh, main purpose is to provide basic information on the subject matter. Okay. We're okay. not lawyers, so this is not legal advice, Okay. basically. So this is take what you will, it makes sense. We're gonna have some sources for you for you to follow up on. And uh, we're also professionals in this, so we can answer some questions later on as well, okay? Cool. So we're gonna have four parts to this uh, presentation. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, first part is what are IPs, right? That's uh, the whole presentation. Intellectual property, we're gonna go into that. Um, what constitute as a, constitutes as an intellectual property and what doesn't. And then we're gonna talk about why are they important for creatives? Usually when you hear uh, the words intellectual property, they have to do, you hear lawyers talking about it, you know, business people. Um, what does that have to do with us as individual creatives? So we're going to go into that. And then how can we protect our IPs and empower ourselves by creating our own IPs? And what do we at Prime Eye Studios do about it? So. Cool. Let's jump in. What are IPs? Want to talk about this one? Okay. So first, does anyone want to share what you guys know about IPs? Like, do you guys know what kind of IPs are out there? Or if you have like, any of your own? Like intellectual properties are like franchises like Mario or Mickey Mouse or Fire Emblem. Okay, good, yeah, exactly. perfect. Any other type of IPs, anybody know? Original character creation, storyline creation, branding. Yes, perfect, yeah, exactly, branding. I'm glad you brought that up too. A lot of people don't realize brands are IPs too. Um, anyone else? Music. Music, yes, owning your masters, right? That's an intellectual property, music, yeah, yeah. Inventions. Invention. Definitely. Yeah. Any, anyone else? Anyone else? That's a lot. Okay, that's a lot. Yeah, you guys covered most of them. <laughs> so it's artwork, a book, an invention, a brand, a logo, but also more than that as well. So there's a di so there's different types of IP that we that's protected through the U.S. government and also internationally. There's copyrights, patents, and trademarks. Right, and uh, this is a different here. So, like the difference between copyright patents and trademarks, we're also going to go over them a little bit as well. Um, so, we want to go over them. Yeah. So, a copyright. All right. So, what is a copyright? Hey, you probably seen this little circle with a C in it. When you want to stake your claim on something you made, when you drew a really dope picture, you don't want nobody else biting off your style and making money off of it. 
put a copyright on it, right? So what is it? It's a uh, right or, or, or artist right. It's a legal term to describe the rights that creators have over their literary, artistic works, right? That anything that you make artistically and you protect it so that other people don't copy it or steal it and make money off of it while you made the idea and worked hard on it to uh, make something of it, right? And it's also could go into advertisements, maps, technical drawings. And just to add for copyright, that's uh, one of the um, IP uh, registering that you don't need to actually register. If you create something, as soon as you put it down on paper or draw it or write it or you know write the music, whatever, you automatically own a copyright on that because you have a timestamp, you have a record of making something. Um, and then we'll talk about how you can go one step further and register it with the government as well. Yes. And uh, one of the resources that we use is uh, WIPO.org. That's the World Intellectual Property Organization. And they work internationally, sponsored through the United Nations, to making sure uh, disputes are settled and rights are protected for all types of intellectual properties. That's what we're using as a source. And also, the United States is, under, is one of the nations that's under that as well. And uh, you can also follow up on the information on copyright.gov. Right? So... Just to let you know, right, so when you make something, when you take it in out of your head, put it down on paper, you jot it down, you draw something, make it on your computer, right, that's when the copyright starts. It doesn't have to be perfectly done, but it has to be outside of your head. It can't be just an idea. So the copyright protects only the expression of it, right? So you got to actually have the book, actually got to have a sticker, actually got to have, a, you know, a post on social media for it to be protected. That way it has a timestamp, that way it exists. That way, it's a tangible thing that could uh, could be disputed, all right? But it's not for ideas, procedures, or a way of doing something, even ma or mathematical concepts, okay? And uh, sometimes it may or may not be available for titles, slogans, or logos, but it depends, okay? That's more into when you get talk to a lawyer about that stuff, all right? How about trademarks? Anybody heard of trademarks? Yeah. Right? You've probably seen these little TMs or Rs next to brand, right? You see a Coca-Cola, you buy a, a can of something, any kind of product, you'll probably see an R or a TM after it. When you see a TM, that stands for trademark. Sometimes SM means service mark, and an R means that it's registered trademark, right? So a TM, you could put it when you want to make a claim on some kind of slogan or a title. You know, let's say you make a comic book, or some kind of book, and you want to, and you don't have the money yet to uh, get it registered because you might want to go through a lawyer, go through the process of doing that. But you want to start making money off your product, you can put a TM on it. You want to look through uh, the government website, US, that you can look up if anybody else has registered that trademark. Or the t so like a title of something, even your name, you could trademark. A right? slogan. Or a slogan, all right? So. Like you may have heard of, you guys remember a couple years ago, Where the Money Resides? Remember that guy? Where the Money Resides. Uh, where the Money Resides, right? You remember him? Don't remember okay. that. Yes, you remember <laughs> him? Okay, so yeah, that was one of, that was like a great example in trademarking because he worked for a car dealership and then he went viral for making up a song, Where the Money Resides, and of course he got a lot of sales out of that, but he overnight got his lawyer, trademarked that because immediately people were like, okay, let's make remixes, let's, you know, how the internet works, right? Yeah. So he immediately got on it, got his lawyer, trademarked that, the next day he had t-shirts and all kinds of stuff, and he, he you know, he's doing good. So that's, yes. that's the power of registering a trademark on a yes. slogan or anything. Yes, so it protects you for you, to, for you to monetize yourself, but also keeps from other people just stealing from it and then, you know, exploiting you or, ta you know, taking advantage of your dope idea and getting cash off of it, you know? You can cease in the system, or you can get compensated if, you know, Target makes a bootleg of your stuff and starts making money out there, right? And also with copyrights and trademarks, when it's registered, you own that property, so it gives you a leverage to deal with the higher ups. Like, let's say you make an interesting character, right? You make a whole story of it, and uh, if you don't register it, somebody could steal it and make money off of it. Like, one thing that happened was, Matrix and Terminator, this lady named Sophia Stewart, 
she said that she she uh, submitted a manuscript to the to the <clears throat> Wachowskis, and they never compensated her and made the Matrix, made billions of dollars. And she was like, "Hold up, I sent you a whole manuscript. You haven't paid me for that." And they went to court, and it's been a battle ever since. I think she got some compensation for it. But the thing is, it became a big battle because she didn't register it before she submitted. And you got the Matrix, and then you got a lady saying, hey, hold up, you took my idea. And now she wants to get billions of dollars on the payback because from her and also James Cameron. Because right? she's talking about that the Matrix and the Terminator are the same universe, and she wrote the whole thing before that. Not to say that I'm the judge about that. I'm just saying if you don't register it, stuff, it could get pretty complicated. It could get messy real quick or over time, all right? Also, uh, you know the, the rapper Common, right? Yeah. He was originally called Common Sense, went, went by Common Sense. Yeah. Another band was called Common Sense, and they're like, hold up, cease and desist. He had to shorten it to Common after that. You know, on his first album, he was called Common, mm -hmm. right? Um, when the Fugees came out, they sampled off of Enya. They didn't pay for that, went on tour and everything. Enya sent them a cease and desist. They didn't care. She sat them with a $1 million lawsuit. They had, to, they had to chop out a million bucks because the user without permission. So ideas are important, right? <laughs> so let's talk a little bit more about trademarks, right? What kind of marks can be registered, right? It could be a word, combination of words, letters, numerals, right? Also it could consist of drawing symbols, three-dimensional features like the shape of a package, you know, even the way that uh, Apple does their boxes. That's a, tra that's a trademark and, and industrial design. And even non-visible stuff, like a sound or a fragrance. So, you know, when you open up your MacBook, that little ding sound, that's a trademark. All right, when you turn on Netflix, you hear that little ding, that's a trademark. Right, when uh, Cardi B, she trademarked Oh Kerr. Yeah. She don't want people making money off Oh Kerr, you know what I'm saying, so. Now you gotta pay her because you just said that. Yes, <laughs> but I'm not charging for this. It's free. Yes. Yeah. Fragrances, right? When you go, when you used to go to Abercrombie and it smelled a certain way, your own colognes, even like you know UPS Brown, yeah. all that. Those are trademarks, yes. and that those are ways for you to protect your brand to making sure that bootleggers aren't just bootlegging. But if it's registered, you could use that to your advantage, right? Like 50 Cent did. He was infringing on everybody's songs, but they were just bootlegs on the streets. But it got his name out there. And when you own the, the trademark, you get to have authority over like cease and desist or use it as a cheap marketing, you know? Sometimes you see you at cons, people out here selling anime, they don't got no rights on them animes, right? They don't got no rights to sell uh, Wolverine pictures and all that, but it also counts as cheap marketing, right? But only if you own this, the registration, right? With me so far? You get it? I think I get it. Any, anything sounding confusing yet? Am I talking yes. too quick? You have a question? Mm -hmm. So because uh, colors, designs, and shapes can be trademarked, uh, would you have to trademark each of them individually? Like let's say UPS Brown, would they have to trademark UPS and UPS Brown? And those are all separate IPs. Yes, oh, okay. yes. And those are all separate assets. Mm -hmm. Like this is, like, uh, for, yeah, so, yes. for, so yeah. for Prime Vice Studios, I have a specific, per, you know, specific color palette. Then I also have to own the name and also the logo, insignias. You gotta pay for each one as a separate class. Yes, good question. Excellent question. Did yeah, like you said, Coca-Cola Red. So they have the color that they own, they have the name Coca-Cola, they have the design of the logo, those are all, yeah. all separate. The polar bear, that mascot. The yeah. yeah, all of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like one thing that Disney did, they went and took advantage of uh, free don't, you know, is this domain, free domain? Yeah. Public, public domain? Public domain. Public domain, thank you. So well, Walt Disney used to do, he said, well, all these stories are on public domain, Snow White and everything. Nobody, that means anybody could use them. So he made his own version of Snow White, Peter Pan, and all of that, for he could have copyright of it and use it for his own advantage and economic empowerment, right? Can I say something? Sure. So recently, Winnie the Pooh went to public domain. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now someone is using it, people are using it for their own for their own projects, including apparently it was just announced that somebody is making a slasher movie about Winnie yes, the Pooh. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that yesterday, actually. Yeah. That's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But Disney also gets pretty uh, aggressive. Like they, they, they took, they'll take a daycare 
to court if they're using C Cinderella and Snow White on their murals. Yeah. You know, but the, so you got it's a double-edged sword, right? So for big corporations, it's kind of like they have to go out and manage it. You know, for little guys, you know, individuals, us just trying to get up in the game, it gives us a chance to be like, hold up. You could you take that, you know, I'm already registered here and talk about it. But I also remember when I was in daycare a very long time ago, I remember there were like Sesame Street and Power Ranger characters on the mural, on the wall, on the walls. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, they could, they could be sued for that. So, for that. yeah. Yes, you had a question? Uh, how much does it cost to trademark something? Okay. <laughs> so we, we will get into that when we show you our trademarks. I guess we can yes. kind of... Well, it starts at about a couple G's, a couple yeah, thousand. That's it. Yeah. And uh, you could do it on your own, register directly through uh, the USTPS, the Trademark and Patent Office. But with a lawyer, it's much smoother, less chance of getting rejected. Yes. And uh, you want to do it when you're confident that you know, you're making some money off of your brand. And uh, you want to make sure it's for the long haul. So long haul meaning not just for your lifetime, your grandkids, 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 right? That these people making money off of Snow White from Disney's, they're billionaires, you know? Um, Stan, oh, you have some questions here? Yes. Sorry, go ahead. So, uh, does that mean that if someone were to commission like an individual artist uh, to draw something which featured a copyrighted like character or like scene or whatever, is that technically copyright infringement? Technically. Like, but what they call after you and shut you down or whatever? Like, even if it's like fan art on DeviantArt? So fan art is different. It's not for sale. Like if you just post, if you if it's not for sale, if you just post fan art on Instagram, you know you get followers and stuff. That's okay because it's not for sale. For them, it's just free marketing, right? You're marketing a character, and it's the same thing with commissions. A lot of times they won't go after you because it's just free marketing for them. But if they see you making a again with corporations, if they see you making a lot of money off of their stuff, they will come after you. Right. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're here today, because corporations have been using trademarks and copyrights to make billions of dollars for years and go after small businesses, small artists, and things like that. But we want to talk about how we can use the same system. resources, same system to empower ourselves and get our stories out there and make money ourselves instead of letting the corporation get the power and things like that. Yes? So where does parody walk in? Parody law. Okay, so that's getting into writing. Um, okay. Yeah, and, and, and art too. Um, again, if you're selling it, that's where you gotta be careful. And a lot of time when it comes to stories and writing parody and satire, when you get pub when you go through the publication process, they have lawyers on deck that will look through your story and they'll tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that, you gotta change the name here or change some details here. So, and yeah. If you're making money, you got to be careful. That's when you got to be careful. You mean like how, what about like the Seltzer and Freeberg movies where they take all those characters and put them in stupid, stupid situations? Like they took Jack Sparrow and Hellboy. Like do they have to go through the copyright process of them just to include them in the parody? Well, the thing is, you could do whatever you want. Okay. But you, so what we're trying to say is, you could do whatever you want. Okay. But also we want you to know what kind of risk you're taking. Yeah. So like if you're doing a parody, it's more like there's free use. You know, you're changing stuff around, you make, you're poking fun, but it's more of a shield, right? So you do kind of, it's kind of like an edgy line. If they get too offended or you're, they could be like, oh, you're doing libel and scandalous to us if you have that much of an influence. And if you don't, they're just gonna ignore you. So something like Spaceballs is okay or? Yeah, yeah that's okay. Cause it's a wholly different story. Yeah, but okay. That's bit enough. But then if you go to like, for example, Spider-Man is owned by Sony but Marvel makes Spider-Man movies. No, so no that it's, place, the, it's they, the other way around. Marvel owns Sony, Marvel owns Spider-Man, Sony makes the movies. Sony owns Spider-Man. Marvel, so, so what I'm saying is, Marvel licenses Spider-Man from Sony to put Spider-Man in Marvel movies because Sony owns Spider-Man. Yeah, Sony owns the rights, the movie rights. Yes. Owns the movie rights. So that's yeah. another, when you're making films using different characters, that's another thing you have to do is you can license them, right? You don't own them, you don't have the copyright, but you can, if you can afford to, you can license the characters and put them in your movies or in your cartoons and things like that. You mean like how Dr. Eggman and Sonic the Hedgehog and Bison, and Bison showed up in Wreck-It Ralph? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you get They'll get permission. 
Yes. I'm going to have to tell this to my friend because my friend is on the spectrum and he wants to make a movie with all these characters from licensed properties and he doesn't really know how to do copyright law. And every time I try to explain it, he just kind of <laughs> goes one in one ear and goes out the other. Yeah, it's, 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 well, this stuff is pretty complicated. And so that's why we're here to kind of simplify and show you guys how you can apply it to your work because it can get very intense. Like we really had to condense even our PowerPoint and our talk today, we had to condense like, what are we gonna focus on? Cause it can get really deep and complex. Yes. yes. Next is patents. All right, so what is a patent, right? Patent is an invention and a patent is an exclusive right that's granted for an invention. So the difference between a patent, trademark and copyright is you could copyright how you make it a, a, an invention, but with an invention you had to make it public, right? But it keeps other people from making the same thing and using it for their own advantage. So like, you know, if you make a squatty potty, you have to let the world know, right? Yeah, I see that a lot of the theme park stuff. Like I saw all these yeah. patents for Universal mm -hmm. that they want to make a boat ride that turns into a flying <laughs> ride. Mm -hmm. That's right. an invention, yeah. So, and what is an invention, right? A product pro or a process that provides in general a new way of doing something or offers a new technical solution to a problem, right? So this is all for those creative thinkers that are making stuff, a new type of, yeah, squatty pie, new type of pooping, right? You know, touch screen phones, right? An application, right? So something that, you're, that people are using and you get to own the rights for it, for that other, for that nobody else's, you know, you can make money, make your money. And then you can license it for other people to expand it in other countries. Yes? All three, all, all, of, them. Them. all, all of them. So like a copyright would be the characters, the pre-design the pre and the all story. that. And the story. How do you go through each one to get registered, or is there something You're going to want to get as much as possible. Yeah. So yeah. one the thing we're... Copyrights are automatically registered. Yes. The trademarks and the patents, if you come up with a new way to do it, so the patents, those, if you don't do it, those yes. can be yes. So also for copyrights, they, you do have an automatic copyright as soon as you create something, but it may not hold up in court. So you still pay money, which, like we said, trademarks are really expensive, but you can always start with a copyright, which will cost you like 50 to 75 bucks for a story or characters. Um, you can get it registered just to protect yourself. If right now you're not at the level where you can trademark something, we would still recommend copyright. This is not legal advice, obviously, but you can still afford to copyright, get a copyright on it. Yes, you have the automatic copyright, but again, like he, uh, Carl gave the example of the lady who apparently wrote The Matrix and the Terminator movies, she did not have it registered. So it's still good to get a registered copyright, because yeah. that's affordable. Yeah, and you could, and there's a such thing as common law trademark, mm -hmm. which is uh, when you got your receipts for selling something, right? So if I'm selling these books, I don't, if I don't have it registered as a trademark, but I have a, a, a timestamp and receipts and a track record that I've been making money off of it, if I see somebody else with the exact same thing, then that still works too. But it's just better to have it registered just to have the full extent of the law on your side. Also with copyright, if you don't have it registered, it costs you money to go out and litigate and stuff. Yes. Right? If, if you have it registered and you call them out on it, they have to pay for those damages. And lawyer fees and everything, the other person has to pay. So that's yes. the difference. You had a question? Uh, yes. Uh, can you patent something that needs another patented object? You can. But you have to, but you can only patent the part that you came up with, and you still got to get permission from the other parts mm -hmm. who owns those. And one thing about pat, uh, patents is you can make something and start making money off of it and then retroactively apply to get it registered. You know, as long as if it's unique enough, yeah, you, you, know, you created like a different kind of ShamWow or something, right? You grew a different type of plant that never existed before or something. Like, it could get pretty intricate. Yes, go ahead. So, patent pending is when you applied. 
start the application process. But the application is not like you submit it and the same day you get a little stamp. It's like, you're patented. It takes a bit. You have to look through it. It gets analyzed. It takes a bit. But you may want to start making money off of it. So when you, you know, you've talked with your uh, legal advice, then uh, they'll let you know about that. Yes? No. So registering a business is for you to legally do your business, I guess. You know, you register with the company for your taxes and stuff. But what you, or when it comes to uh, IPs, you're going to be registering parts of your business. Your business name, right? Like Ludacris, he trademarked Ludacris. So that nobody was going to come out calling himself Ludacris. He had to pay a couple Gs to get that. Make sure you own your name, right? I had to pay to register Prime Vice to make sure nobody else is calling themselves Prime Vice out there to have these talks and sell this kind of product, right? Um, you're going to want to copyright your, your uh, distinct insignia, right? What's your logo? If you have a specific way of writing your trademarks and stuff, you're going to want to get that copyright. If you have your own spokes characters and stuff like that, your own ori OCs, original characters, get those things protected. That way you can just feel confident when you post it, making your posts out there, you know? Yes? Um, so, right. Um, depends what you have prepared at the time that you want to register. You know, like one thing that's, that's pretty cool to do is have your characters designed already. You know, have the outline, like have something that you could submit. And if it's, and if it's like a blueprint for a bigger thing, it'll make it easier on you. But let's say you didn't think of it that way, or the universe grew over time. And you want to, but you know that's going to be called this title, you know, this is called, it's going to be called Star Wars, no matter what. Everything's going to be under Star Wars then you're gonna to wanna to own the umbrella and build some city areas under that. Yeah, for example, I'm a writer, so I have a script, but I don't have the artwork yet. I still upload, went ahead and uploaded my script and got a copyright on it because that, it's a timestamp, it will protect the name of the story, the characters, everything in that universe, even if I don't have the character designs yet or things like that, I could do that later. But just to go ahead and protect my universe and my story, I'll go ahead and upload the document, and that's it. All you need to do is upload the PDF. Uh, I have a question. Okay. So I write children's books, and I started, I started making them around 11 years ago when I was in high school, and I'm, start, I'm w slowly working on getting them done for now. Can I still, uh, is it still possible to get the copyright on them even though they're like 11 years old? There's it's never too late. All right, that's good. Like one thing I did, you know, I have my comic characters. I, I've made them like back in 2008, 2010. Crappy little drawings and stuff. Scanned them in, got a copy written. I just knew the characters look way different now. I got a lot better since drawing them. But the names are going to be the same, right? Like I had this character, right, called Comico and stuff. The mask is still the same, but I didn't have a logo for him. So I, I protected the copyright 10 years ago. Then when I made the when I had the costume made and I had knew how to use uh, Adobe Illustrator and had and got the iconic logo on it, then I just copyrighted that and it just kind of you could keep building on your name, keep building on the same thing because you already own the original. So that way you can kind of keep stacking, bop 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 over time. Right, okay. So how does it typically work whenever you So that's, that's why fine. that's why you want to uh, have clear paperwork, a clear form that you both sign on, and uh, make clear who owns what. Because the art, the artist might want to use the art for their portfolio, but you don't want them. Maybe you don't want them to make money off of it unless they're like your artist and you want to go have have these on it. Mm -hmm. You know, like what happened with uh, Spider Man, right? Steve Ditko designed the Spider Man. How you guys know with the red and blue. Stan Lee came up with the story. He don't know how to draw, oh. right? But uh, how many people know Steve Ditko? Only people, who, if you know, you know, not everybody. I know Steve Ditko. Everybody just knows Stan Lee. Yep. <laughs> he did everything, right? So yeah. you, want, you want to make sure you delineate and be clear. You know, like I wrote this, 
and uh, have your own timestamp on it. Yeah. And then you might want multiple artists to work on it too. So make sure you own the character's name, the scripting, and what you want to own about it. Yeah, and for that, that's why we make really clear contracts in which we say that the artists can use the artwork for you know their portfolio or on their website, but they cannot make any money off of the art because we own it. Only we can uh, sell it or license it. Yeah, but if you don't have that clearly written or registered, then it gets fuzzy. Right? You want to make sure that if something does happen in the future, because you know at the time you're like, this guy's cool. Whatever, we're friends and we're gonna be friends forever. Then all of a sudden when they're like making millions and you're still broke, like, wait, hold up. You wanna make sure yeah. stuff is clear and if things get fuzzy down the line that things could be clarified and settled in an appropriate manner that doesn't, you know, hurt people's families. Okay, let's do a couple more questions so we can get through the rest of our thing and then we'll do more questions at the end, okay? So I know you had your hand up for a while. All right. What if your IP is something that's very easy to either copy or modify slightly like a knockoff? What can we do to protect your IP in that respect? So Mickey Mouse is one thing, but then someone makes Joey Mouse and all he has is just niches and views. So if, you're, if you create an IP that's way too close to other existing IPs, you will not be able to protect it. That's where you will fail your application. All the way around. Way make around. something new and someone else basically can come around and they make something very similar to it. Well, that's what you want to protect them for, so that when somebody makes something similar, you can shut them down or make yeah. sure you have rights over it yeah. when, you, yeah. when you catch that. Sorry, yeah, so, um, I... Can we get... Sorry, oh, sorry. other people had... Can we get... Some, we'll come back to you. Sorry, go ahead, sir. Okay, so you had your hand up for a bit. Yeah. I've got a question. Can I answer it? Um, how does copyright work with uh, something that has the same name? So, like, say, like, you make a character named Leo. And it's very, very different Neo. Yeah, so it has to be very, very different. Like, okay, I got Neo in from the Matrix. He can fly, and he's dealing with a computer world. And my Neo is a baker, and you know he has a whole different race. Or he's, a, you know, he's part alien. Like, make it distinct. Okay. Yeah. You want to make it original and distinct. Not to mean you can't be influenced by anything, but you want to make it a whole different thing. Okay, so let's... Let's continue with, and then we'll take more questions. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> so, why are IPs, why are they important for creators, right? Ownership equals money. Economic empowerment, you know? Just like owning a house. You know, when you have a book, artwork, brand, logo, it gives you authorship, right? It gives you an authority over something that you came up with. Do you have anything to add? No, go ahead. So right. that's number one. Number two, no, this is the number one. Ownership, no ownership equals no money. So you ever had a moment when you had a dope idea for years and then you see like a show come out or a comic come out, it's like, yeah. I had that five years ago, but you didn't do it, right? You didn't put in the work or you didn't post it out. Or you didn't write it down. You, you didn't write it down. So, you know, one thing we really try to encourage, you know, we're not here to give advice, like we said, Please. but we do want to encourage you to believe in your ideas. You know, get them out of your head, get it at least down on paper, type it up, print it up, start making it exist, you know, for that. And then believe in it enough to, uh, if, you, if you think it's, it's, it's worth something for the future, yeah. you know, give it the proper protection, you know, give it the body armor. Yeah, and to go off on that, we have, you know, we have a lot of creative friends and colleagues, and we've, so many, we've heard them say, you know, like, I have this great idea, but I don't want to tell anyone, or I don't want to talk to anyone about it because they might steal it. You know, and it's like, if your idea is that great, write it down. Put a timestamp on it. Then you can talk, in fact, talking about your ideas helps your ideas grow because you can feel it out your audience, the people responding to your idea, do they like it, what do they not like, what maybe they give you feedback, you can develop your idea. So you should all, you, you can't come up with great ideas in a vacuum. So you should always be talking about your ideas and selling it and not even just selling it, but just collaborating and sharing. But make sure you have that timestamp, the documentation on it, okay? Because that will actually help you build better ideas. So don't hoard your ideas. Yeah. Like you may notice, like, when it, a lot of movies get made off of uh, books, all right? So one bit, and if you go to Hollywood, everybody got a screenplay, mm -hmm. right? When we talk to screenwriters, they usually don't copyright their screenplays. They just try to get it produced. But if you're a novelist, or you're a comic artist, a writer, you have an IP that you could decide to license out to, for a different kind of production. 
that you can transliterate into another format for another, mo you know, another type of media. So that's one advantage of creating something that you could own. You know, that way you can have the option to commercialize on it. If you don't own it, you can't commercialize on it. You know, Netflix won't take you as seriously. Yeah, that's the other part. If you don't have a registered ownership of your IP, a lot of times you can't work with bigger companies. They won't even mess with you because they're like, well, this sounds bootleg or, you know. If you want your art on a t-shirt in Target, you have to have it registered. If you want to work with Netflix, you have to have your stories registered or they won't even go with you. So. Yeah, or well, they could take advantage. they would be like, all right, that was a nice chat and then get their own writers to make their own version of it. So, you know, just for number two, right? Voluntary registration, right? You're not required to do it. Helps solve disputes. You don't want to have disputes, all right? Simplifies financial transactions and sales and the assignment and transfer of rights. If you want to sell your rights, like Alan Moore sold off Watchmen and hated what they did with it, but that was up to him, all right? That was, that was the type of agreement that he did. George Lucas sold off Disney, the rights to Star Wars, and he kind of hated it too at first, or he said he did and changed his mind. Yeah. But yeah, so that's a lot of power and money that he lost yeah. in that. You know, Stanley, uh, Marvel Comics went bankrupt, but for some reason, Spider-Man and the individual characters are still worth millions and billions of dollars, apart from the comic production company. All right, so it could get pretty interesting. <laughs> You know, and the, and the thing that's kind of cool is, if you don't own a business, if you just, you know, if you have time to write, or if you, you know, you can at least write or draw, you can make something, you know, and still work your day job, still do whatever, and then still have something that's going to supplement your income for years on end, and even your future generations, and you get to have a say-so on who gets to benefit from that. You know, like, uh, Marvel was sold to Disney when he, you know, when Stanley was over 80 years old. He got to enjoy the, you know. Be in all his movies and have fun until, well, until his 90s, right? Mm -hmm. But he didn't even come up with Spider-Man until he was at least 40 years old. It's never too late. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So, bam. So why are they number important three. for creatives number three? So, this one. Startup costs, okay? So, as we know, um, especially in this country, a lot of people who have built wealth over generations have done been able to do it because they owned property and a long time ago they owned people. So that is where generational wealth comes from. But to own property today, try buying a house in this market, right? It's <laughs> our generation, especially, you know, millennials, Gen Z, it's like it's not even a thing like what a house, how? When? Ever. <laughs> you know? So that's the great thing about intellectual properties is it's a low startup cost. It doesn't cost anything. Like right now, I could just write this down on a piece of paper, take a picture of it, whatever, you know, free. Um, and like I said before, even to register a copyright, you know, it's very affordable to even just do that if you can't afford trademarks and patents and all that stuff. So low startup costs is really, really great. And that's why, you know, our presentation, if you saw the subtitle, is geared towards underserved communities, underrepresented communities, you know, and we're storytellers, so we are always encouraging more stories from, you know, underrepresented communities, and I think for us, for our communities, it's even more important because we don't have access to capital, we can't get loans as easily, or, you know, we don't have that generational wealth, you know, and for us, this is the way to start that empowerment for ourselves, our community, our families, and things like that. So, low startup costs, intellectual property. Yeah. It gives uh, brilliance a fighting chance, <laughs> right? And uh, you get to uh, control what it's the value of it. You know, you don't have to be like, you know, worried about your crypto going up and down or your savings account going up and down. It's about what you got up here and what, channeling, channeling that energy out there, you know, whatever format it is, whether it be social media, your website, whether you're making something tangible, some fly fashion designs, or, you know, you're making something for somebody to enjoy, you know? Um, so yeah, low startup costs, because not all of us could afford a house or some land and do all that, but, you know, a lot of us have a phone, we could think of something and make something that could affect the world. Yeah. Okay. All right, so what's this? So how do we protect our ideas? And a lot of you guys are already asking questions about this, so we kind of went over this already with the questions, but basically, 
write it down, produce it, create something a value or you put, you know, you decide how valuable you want it to be. And then you register it with the US government, um, starting with a copyright, um, then you can go up to trademark and if it's an invention patents. Um, and then you control who can or can't use your IP. You can sell it, license it, build on it, right? Once you own, uh, once you register that asset, it's no longer an idea, now it's an asset. Yeah, like for example, Coca-Cola, the recipe is the most important asset. The, the Coca-Cola name is more important than all their factories. Mm -hmm. Like, even like two people can't even know the full code to access it. They have to like fly in different airplanes and have two different keys. Like, it's pretty intricate, you know. And those are called trade secrets, you know. So, they believe in it that much. Whatever they're putting in that, <laughs> you <Who> know. <laughs> but uh, just to know how serious it could get, though. Yeah. All right, so idea, make it, you know, whether you want to make it in public or in private, but make sure you're getting it out of your head. That's the most important thing. Like, put it into something that could uh, be registered. Go ahead and, you know, voluntarily register it, however you, you deem possible. And make sure you get control what happens with it. You know, like, you're going to spend a lot of time and years making something. You want to make sure it's going to keep growing in value. And that's something that's kind of cool about IP is that, you can control what, what its value is because it's unique, it's special. You know, it affects the market in a particular way that's not guided by Wall Street, it's not guided by crypto, it's not guided by necessarily anything. You can impact the industry however you want, whether it be on the street level, mainstream, digital, it's up to you. So what does PVS do? So PVS, that's us, Prime Vice Studios, LLC, right? So what do we do? We develop ideas into assets, right? Ideas, what you think about, what you're making, what you want to make, and we help you turn it into an asset for yourself, right? We help you get it ready and prepared so that you can register it and knowing that you have something that's a value that's an asset for you. And we help and we assist in marketing, how to license and sell it, how to get it out there in ways of magnetizing that asset for that you're making some dough. So just to clarify, we don't do the legal paperwork, but in order to do the legal paperwork for your idea, you have to get it ready. You have to have certain, uh, you have to have it in a certain form before they will accept it as an IP that can be registered. You know, like I said, you can fill out mm -hmm. a form to register for a trademark, but they can be like, no, that doesn't work. That's too similar to this, or we don't have the right paperwork, we don't have the right images or the forms. So what we will help you do, what we help people do, and do we do it for ourselves too, is take these ideas and turn it into something that can be protected, and then submit it to uh, get a copyright or a trademark, and things like that. Yeah, you know, we, we got NDAs and everything, so making sure you got the ownership of your stuff the way it is, and then we just help you and, give, you know, helping you along, you know? And we do work with lawyers, uh, so we do have that connection as well. We're not lawyers exactly, but, we have the connection to making sure it's a one-stop shop for you, right? And who else are we? So we're the premier sequential art company, right? We work with sequential art. You know, I have my MFA, Masters in Fine Arts from Sequential Art. That's what I studied. And we use sequential art as a vehicle for intellectual power development. So the what is sequential art? Essentially storytelling art, comics, storyboards, the combination of words and pictures. And that's what you technically need to register a copyright and to also register a trademark and also to get into the beginning phases of a patent application, industrial designs. So we have the skill set to help people and do it that way, and that's why we work about doing it. And, uh, you know, apart from just running our studio, we also teach. So we're also about, you know, we're also educators working from the elementary school level all the way to college and, and elderly. Whoever is down, we welcome you in. And we work with our signature process that's uh, on curriculum and, and we have our own workbook that's obviously protected as well. Uh, we've done workshops throughout Metro Atlanta. We've been sponsored through the Pollination Project to make sure we could hit underserved communities in the Metro Atlanta area. We got um, hired by um, Atlanta Beltline to yeah. teach workshops on the Beltline. So we've been around the community and been teaching um, just to because we want to empower communities and empower people to get their ideas down. 
from the front. Yes. So, so helping you helps us. <laughs> Bye. And we also work with brands, businesses, corporations, nonprofits. Right? We help them increase their revenue by helping them identify, create, develop, and cultivate the intellectual property. So sometimes people don't know what they're working with. You know, sometimes people are just out there posting stuff. And we're like, okay, let's have a little consultation and show you, like, yo, you got some things going on. This is how you go about protecting it, the beginning steps, and how to, you know, grow, grow your wealth, grow your economic empowerment. And also uh, protect yourself, you know. Yeah. Continue to have that confidence. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. So. Huh? No, no. This is a, so, right, so through our, our workshops and services, we essentially our our mission is to build a stronger community. Our community being people that are like minded like us, creators, creators, people that have new ideas, people that uh, want to get out the struggle, and. Uh, have some fly stuff out there that uh, people could just gravitate to and we go network and build together. So they, they show us a little bit, the following night piece for itself, right? We're not just doing lip service, but uh, we also uh, believe in building from within. So one thing is uh, that's our logo type for Prime, you know, Prime Vice Studios. I've had to register and trademark copyright Prime Vice itself to making sure nobody Especially you know, all the art studios out there calling themselves by that name. And in case anybody starts hearing that and it's not us, but it's not specifically me, you know they're not the real deal. They're not us, you know? And we work in, you know, been working on this for years and continue to do so. And my aim is to make sure when people think of that, they're thinking of us. All right? And that name came from, you know, prime, meaning like number one, you're primal. Everybody has something that they just believe in themselves and vice just. You can't stop doing it. Someone can't stop drawing. We just compost, you know? So for me, it's, I built it as an art studio initially, but I also know that it's, in a broader sense, a lifestyle brand that I want people to just, whatever they're feeling inside in their gut that they, they feel composed to do, I want to help them get it out and uh, being about that, you know, not just being a superficial influencer, but actually uh, being authentic about it. You know, this is our hyena. This is our spirit animal. Um, I just love hyenas, and it's the spirit animal of us because they're they're hunter and scavengers, kind of just how my company has came to be. We had to go and get our make our opportunities, but and very grassroots. And at the same time, you got to do it solo. We okay with that, but we work actually as a team as well. And uh, lions be trying to hate on us, so fuck it. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, but I registered it all together so that I could make sure all the parts of, this, of the logo are protected and that I could take snippets of it and making sure I uh, use it to my own accord. All right, so you see that you already see the little R on there, so you already know that it's uh, legally protected. Yes? So, so just for your logo, you already have For trademarks, yes. Okay. For mm -hmm, trademarks. Mm -hmm. Not for copyright. So in copyright, you can put it all together and do it as a one-shot deal, depending on how you submit it. But when it came to um, trademark, I had to trademark in a separate class, just Prime Vice. And then I had to also, the logo, because it's a distinct logo, the way I wrote Prime Vice is drawn up. So, and, and the hyena, so all that was separate and I had to uh, pay for that. <laughs> yes. Pretty petty. Um, this is one of our IPs. Uh, this is a project that we're working on. It's a, so she's a as she said mentioned she's a writer. I'm a comic artist, and uh, we 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 have a comic series called The Ambiguously Brown Couple. Yes, <laughs> that's us. That's us. So as you said, this is a brand, um, an IP that's a brand. So we can take. Um, if you look at the cover, it looks kind of like a sitcom. Um, that's kind of what it is, but it's an, it's going to be Instagram comic series, a uh, humorous uh, comic. But it's also an IP. So if, in the future, if we want, we can take it from Instagram comic to a book, to a movie, a show, a cartoon. The, the possibilities are endless, right? So that's when you build a brand and protect it so you have all these possibilities to you know, grow it, grow revenue, um, and own the rights. Yeah, so as you see here, I have my Prime Vice comics on it. 
that's our branding on it, just to show that we're the source of making that. We have the TM on the Bigusi Brown couple because we want to put the timestamp out there and it's register and getting the registration ready over time. So if you hear, and then we also have our little logo on the bottom for it for our ABC and our likeness. Um, and our likeness. People can own your likeness. Um, for example, I'll give you an example. Um, I don't know if you guys know Walter Mercado, but he is um, what do you call? He's a fortune. Horoscope. Horoscope. Astrologer. Uh, personality astrologer. Personality. Very famous uh, in the eighties, I think. Or eighties and nineties. Yeah. Nineties. Yeah. Um, and he was a personality. Like he was a whole brand. And um, he signed contracts where people got the rights to his name and his likeness and his whole brand. It got to the point where he couldn't even use his own name without permission from these corporations. So, so this kind of brand, here we are you know, uh, registering our likeness, our face, our, or our cartoon face, our names. Um, yeah, it's an avatar. If, if, if you're becoming a brand, like a personal brand, where you use your name and your likeness, it's really important to register because someone else can't have the power over you, which is insane. Yeah. yeah, so this is Damiana, the prickly pixie, as one of my registered characters. I have little stickers here. And it's a fairy character I made. She's part of a comic series. And yeah, so getting her registered was important because it also gives me the opportunity to put her on my music covers mm -hmm. and use her however I want and making sure if you see any other character that looks like her or any the fairy character with cactus hair, you already know where the source was at and I have some recourse over it. Mm -hmm. So be on the lookout for her. All right, she's part of my, con then I have my comics, you know, we make our own comic series. This is St. Love City Funk. This is a con you know, original series that I've been working on and have out, also have on our website. You know, this is one of my characters. His name is a Comico, He's a, and you see he, I have a comic cover and also made a character sheet with props and his logos and everything and got, got, had to get that all registered as well to make sure I can keep growing on it. So even though nobody's heard about it, it's in the yeah. works, and that's what you have. Yeah. And when you see in this stick, you know it's coming from somewhere. And I could feel confident that uh, nobody else is going to use that likeness without my permission. Bye. So this is Lung Girl. Um, so this is actually, I have a nonprofit called the Sid Foundation, and we raise money for our nonprofit through this comic book series. So it's um, our, our nonprofit raised funds for lung transplant patients. Um, so this is a superhero. Uh, called Lung Girl, and she has superpowers and saves the world from lung disease and bad guys. So again, this is a comic book series, but she's also a, a mascot. So I have to get her registered because she's a spokesperson for my nonprofit. She's a mascot and a comic book character. So yeah, like here we have the comic books. Um, I have her stickers, but I also create content with her talking about lung issues or giving advice and things like that. So I have to make sure that she's registered. And especially with her, because uh, I've seen people, uh, lung transplant patients and people with lung health issues, they see her on social media and they immediately they'll share and post it on their page and things like that, which Again, I don't mind because I want them to be inspired by her. She's supposed to inspire people and make people feel seen that have lung issues. But at the same time, it's, so it's like free marketing. You know, it's like she's getting out there but also inspiring people. But at the same time, if somebody tries to, you know, get a financial gain off of her or, or something like that, that's where I would be able to cease and desist and be like, no, this is my character. Yeah. You also have moral rights, making sure you don't want to use it in a slanderous way. You know, like sometimes you'll see like cartoon porn with like Dragon Ball Z or Disney characters. So it yeah. gives you protection over even moral rights over your properties. Yeah. Um, and this is again, this is my logo, AV, and my uh, brand, my writer brand called Brown Girl Writes. So that's where I write my blogs and things like that. Um, and this is also uh, protected through copyright. How can we help you? The last part. All right. So what do we do? We can develop your idea, right? Sometimes you don't know what you're working on. You've been working on stuff, and we want to help you get it to the next level, right? We help you prepare for registration, so making sure it's a smooth transition. 
And we help you strategize on how to market, license, and or sell it, okay? So, you know, one of our things is we want to, you know, empower yourself and let us help you turn your ideas into valuable assets. Cool, so this is our workbook, uh, as, as I showed you before. It's called the PVS, right? Fresh Voices work, Workbook. Uh, we sell these for $10 in person today and also online if you want to order them. Mm -hmm. And we use these for our workshops, mm -hmm. but if you're not able to attend a workshop, uh, you can also, we have a series of YouTube videos you can watch to kind of help you go through the workbook and stuff as well. And of course, you can uh, have consultations with us and we can take you through the process also in the workbook. And we have, before we leave, we, we do a little online campaign. It's called the Hashtag PV Sketch Challenge. Right, and I have these sheets here, where you, you guys that draw, I want you to, what we're doing is you draw your original character, and then you can use the hashtag PV sketch, and, and tag us in your art at, at prime underscore vice, upload it to uh, IG, and we're doing a little can, um, special campaign today, where we pick the most, yeah, where we're gonna pick the three original iconic characters, and we're gonna send them a book in the mail, but also, We've been doing this for years, and you, you look up hashtag PV Sketch, there's tons of artists, and we're using it to promote artists and do like a cross promo mm -hmm. for that. You can see different kind of styles out there. People have their own things out there, so we're not doing it to collect art. You can take the paper, but just, you know, we want you to showcase and be part of the movement. This is to encourage you to create your own characters, basically. Um, you upload it to your own, uh, your own social media, and now you have a, tam a timestamp on your own original character. So it's to encourage you guys to get started on your own IPs. And of course, you could tag us, hashtag PV Sketch. Like you said, there's tons of artists. There's you know famous, uh, artists. famous established artists on there. There's children, you know, up and coming artists. There's all. It's a whole community online. We want you guys to join and share your own IPs with us. Yes. So. And like you said, um, top three, we're gonna pick the top three most original, iconic characters. So it's not about how well you draw. The most uh, original, iconic characters. Um, uh, we're gonna send you guys out a workbook, a free workbook. And the top pick uh, will get a free coaching session, one hour coaching session with us. So we encourage you guys to, at, at the end, we're almost done, to come and, we got free stickers, come get some stickers, uh, grab a PD sketch challenge sheet, and um, on, on your own time, draw, upload, and um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and the, one, the free one hour coaching session, uh, we typically charge for just a $200 value. So, lucky winner, <laughs> get to t work with us, and you'll see the value of what we have to offer in that as respect as well. So, uh, That's it. we got like three minutes left. Okay, three minutes. I just have Questions. One, I just have one final question. Okay. Go ahead. So, I have a character named Saber Bear, who is a little teddy bear with razor blade claws and teeth. Okay. But then I found out that there's a Star Trek creature called a Saber Bear, mm. which is like some kind of beast. I don't know much about Star Trek, but I looked it up, and it's apparent, the Star Trek one is spelled S A B E R, and I, so I decided to spell mine S A B R E. Is that okay? That they're two completely different things. I mean, so again, we're not lawyers, so we're, we can't give you legal advice, but you can try it and see, like, you know, like uh, Liz was saying before, if it's completely different and just has a similar name, you could get away with it, but you have to make sure it's that different. It's a risk that you're really, that you have to be willing to take. All right, so. thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, that you can apply, but I've never gone through that, so I didn't know if you guys had anything about going through the program. Yeah, so there's some law schools that uh, they have some students get their practice by working with uh, doing that as pro bono, but there is a wait list and, and they fill up real fast. Okay. So it's, it is an opportunity, and if you're a patient, you know, you could go that route. And it is available, and there's a listing of them if you go through uh, the USTPO.gov. You can could, you could find the different universities that do that or even go in person. But definitely like law schools do that. 
and it's done through students for like their semester projects and they get, they get credit and that's why they offer pro bono. And they're overseen by an actual like law professor and everything. So it's legit and it's uh, less costly but longer wait time obviously. Let's get someone who has it. Thank you both for being here. Sing to um, people of color, <laughs> educating me on this is really important, and I can't wait to work with y'all in the future. So, yeah. um, <laughs> but I have two questions. One thing, I'm uh, I'm a performer, it's a creative, and I have a, a podcast where I talk about Avatar The Last Airbender, right? And so we're getting started with garnering um, support from people. However, we did register it through Anchor initially to help us get the process started. So when it comes to copywriting things, which we're going to be doing into shortly, uh, do you foresee any, like, uh, or if you're a YouTuber too, for instance, let's say, like, you have something on a platform, how much claim do these third party folks have to our art in that way? That's where it gets kind of fuzzy. <laughs> Did you sign yeah. contracts? No. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's fuzzy, and you might want to draw some contracts for that and clarify the terms. Yes. That's where you need contracts. So, also, we can, I don't mind keeping on chatting, but if you have to go, we understand. You're yeah. going to want us to close down here in a bit. So if you, have, if you guys want to come grab a sticker or, and, do, and participate in a PU's guest, that's fine. And we'll keep having the conversation going until the kick is out and we're forced to shut down. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah.